Welcome back. We continue our focus uh, tonight on how South Africa is treating its children. According to murder stats from the first half of the year, we can tell you that three children are murdered each and every day. Many more are subjected to extreme violence or sexual abuse. Now we're looking at another dimension. According to a global nonprofit organization, A21, South Africa is a hub for international human trafficking syndicates. A21 organized uh, walks in cities around the world and in several South African cities uh, just a few days ago to raise awareness about human trafficking. We're joined by A21's local spokesperson, Katie Madra. Uh, Ms. Madra, thank you for being with us. You, you say South Africa is a prime destination for international human trafficking syndicates. Uh, tell us more. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Yes, we are, as a country, a hub for human trafficking. If you just look at the way South Africa is set up, we're a, um, a country that's got many borders that are very porous, land and um, air and sea borders. But we also have levels within our country that render our people very vulnerable. In fact, the Global Slavery Index tells us that 54% of our population are highly vulnerable to falling prey to trafficking. And this is because of individual vulnerabilities. So things like levels of education, um, abuse within the household, uh, disability, that sort of thing, but also systemic vulnerabilities. So that's the GDP, levels of corruption, access to housing and water and sanitation access to education. So if you see all of these factors play, rendering our people and specifically our children very vulnerable. So, so that was my next question. To what extent are, are children being trafficked? Well, if you, if you have a look at it, or if you, if you understand trafficking, it's a crime preying on vulnerability. And children are vulnerable by nature. They rely on parents, on caregivers, on adults protecting them. And when that isn't there, they are rendered even more vulnerable to insidious crimes like human trafficking. I think the stats for the continent are that 64% of victims of trafficking are actually children in Africa. And um, the, South, the South African Office of A21 runs the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Last year, 30% of the cases reported were um, potential child victims of trafficking. Sure. So, so some are in transit. You say South Africa, um, you know, some stay here, some are in transit. Sometimes the buyers, the people who actually buy people, uh, are situated in South Africa. And, and it results in various things, sexual exploitation or, or forced uh, labor. Uh, I, I know you, you can't give one catch-all answer, but what is the, the fate of children trafficked usually in South Africa? It depends what type of trafficking you're looking at. You know, if you think of a child, if you're looking at the sex tourism industry and sex trafficking, how long will a child last in that kind of environment? You know, so that's probably quite different to a child who would be caught in forced labor, maybe in the illegal mines or in the fruit picking industries. Um, you know, that, that's quite different. Sorry, it's quite crude to talk about it this way, I, I feel, but it yeah. just depends. But the, the reality is that a child is meant to be playing. A child is meant to be protected. A child is meant to be championed and free. So if they're caught in slavery, how long will they last? If, if their bodies last, their hopes and dreams, their nature, how long will that last in those kind of environments? And, and the Deputy Justice uh, Minister, he was marching, uh, he was on that march, one of them that you organised, and, and said this is a hidden crime. So specifically children uh, may not even know that they can go and ask somebody for help. So, so that is the nature of it. They don't have to be tied up in a dark room somewhere. Uh, they may just be caught in a situation and not know that there is a way out. Is that correct? That, that's exactly it. I think we also need to change our understanding of how human trafficking happens. I think the narrative is that children are snatched and taken. Yes, that does happen sometimes. But very often, it's a crime of opportunity. So children who are unsupervised um, you know, during the day or, um, or not very well um, supervised and monitored. So there may be somebody who sees an opportunity, an, an extra vulnerable child that they may be able to, to you know, abuse and, and take advantage of. But then you also have online grooming. We mustn't underestimate what um, online world today. Many of us did not grow up with the online world. We've learned it as adults. Our children are growing up in a cyber society. So as we're teaching children how to cross a road, how not to touch hot water, how to interact with people, we need to be teaching them the same kind of rules and safety measures for online. So very often grooming can actually happen online through the gaming chats, through WhatsApp, through other apps, social media apps. Um, and those are sorts of things we can actually put a layer of protection in and protect our children, mm -hmm. whether it's physical vulnerabilities or online vulnerabilities. 
I, I saw the stat, and how sobering is this? One percent, only one percent of all victims are ever rescued. That's incredible. It is, I think, and that, that speaks of why awareness is so important. That's why we did and why we do the Walk for Freedom every year. In fact, we've got, just got some of the numbers back. We've had over 400 media articles around the world, um, 815 million people reached through social media just from that one day. Awareness is such a key tool so that people understand, firstly, how to protect myself from being trafficked, how to protect my children, but also if I see it, where do I report it? If it's happening to me, how do I get help? That's what's going to change that statistic of 1% ever being rescued. Or, as I like to say, 99% never being rescued. I think that actually, that hits home harder. 99% of victims will never be rescued. And so the onus is on us to be aware and to know what to do about it. And we'll bring up that hotline number. There, there was, uh, firstly, a controversy a few years ago when the minister then, Malusi Gigaba, said that parents would have to take birth certificates with them uh, when they got on, on a flight. That affected travel and tourism. But I'd love your view. I mean, uh, does a, a measure like that work? What sort of measures should we be putting in place um, as, as authorities in South Africa? Yeah, I think that's, that's a good question. Listen... I'm all for protective measures in place. Um, you know, if, if a seatbelt is going to protect my child in a car, I'm going to put a seatbelt on them. If something at a border is going to stop any person from taking a child who's not related to them across the border, I think it's, I think it's an important tool. However, that is a fail-safe at the end of the line. We need to be asking the questions of what are we doing at home? What are we doing within our communities? Do our children understand the difference between safe and unsafe relationships? Safe and unsafe secrets? safe and unsafe touch. Do they know they can come to you if any of that is taking place within their immediate world, at school, in their community, with the people that they know? We need to, yes, our government needs to put measures in place, but we cannot um, outsource parenting and what we need to be doing at home, whether you're a parent or a caregiver, but if you've got little ones in your world. All right, let's end with this. What do people do if they think a child is in trouble? I mean, maybe you can even give us some of the, the warning signs or has been or is being trafficked. Great. I think the first thing is personality changes. If you're starting to see your little one is far more withdrawn, um, they are far more moody, you know, obviously within context of hormones and teenagers, but you're seeing major changes in personality and interactions. I, as a parent, would start asking questions. Have they been online a lot lately? Do I know who they're chatting to online? Who are the people in their world? Ask the questions. It doesn't mean they're being groomed or trafficked. It's just you start asking the question. I think that's the, the first thing that, that one needs to be aware of. I think, secondly, we need to have the kind of relationships with our children that they can come to us. They're not going to be shamed if they've made a mistake. You know, if they've maybe done something that you said they shouldn't and they've ended up in what might be online grooming, that they can come to you. So I think that's the first warning sign. It's notice personality changes. Um, but I think it's also, it's about having those open communication, open communication with your children. So I would just actually put the protective measures in there in place instead of just recognizing the warning signs. Once you've had the conversations and the child knows that they can come to you. I would also say if you're starting to notice this within your children and you're seeing something strange or you're seeing something happening next door, call the hotline number. It's 0800 222 It may not result in anything immediately, but you have put in a, a case report there that, you know, is protective for that child. You may think it's nothing. It may be something that social development can step in and, and protect that child immediately. So even if you suspect, report, because I think, you know, that phone call could save the life of a child. You can also obviously call Childline. They have an incredible counseling service that you can you know, call in and get some guidance from them if you're worried about your child. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And let me just repeat that number. Uh, one number was left off on the screen. 0800 222 is the trafficking hotline number. That was A21's local spokesperson, Katie Madra.